some interesting ideas to share with you very quickly. Become very playful with ideas of history. Become very playful, you know, with everything. You can always be playful with everything in your life. But when you become uh, playful with history and news and media, you don't take it so seriously. And literally, you do not get influenced in that way. You know, I see many girls, um, very, very beautiful girls, walking, putting shades on, and having a certain fashion that they're keeping. And I wonder why such beautiful girls don't really look at how because they're so self-aware of how they look they are not perhaps experiencing everything in the moment fully they are distracted by their own looks you know and when a woman who is a uh, very women are a very important presences to have on earth they are they reflect creation literally women reflect creation and their values must be or our values must be that what reflects creation should come first and then you know other you know <laughs> reflections of creation you know such as man so women need to be taken care of children of course above all children are the purest references of human experience we have everybody looks at their childhood and finds through the hardships they have defined for themselves that when they were a child it was good you know it was it was everything was easy but then you had to you know grow up into the corporation which you're going to work at you know so <laughs> Before that, there's, um, a very important connection that just as how we need to look at how there is night and day, we look at that the same in that space where we look at light, night and day, we should equivalently from the space that we look at man and woman look you know literally use that metaphoric resemblance and connect our experience because if you don't you may for example have been brought up in a very you know playful healthy you know environment mentally healthy environment you know natural you know there wasn't that much need or demand, you know, there was, it was a very natural, you were, you were, you had a very good experience of life, good experience, I'm not saying rich or poor, I'm just saying good experience of life, you know, of authenticity in your natural self, then if you, then if you, I'm sorry, let me just harmonize my breathing real quick. I just want to harmonize it for a second. Okay. To continue on after that long delay, there is, um, significant presence that really gives us a better relationship of how real our life is and how our duality functions in our eyes. You have two eyes. Why do you have two eyes? Why don't you have one eye? Why do you have two eyes, for example? When you question why you have two eyes and then again very resemble like see you have two eyes you know um there's night and day 
there's good and bad. <laughs> there's, um... Whatever other duality, that yin-yang, that black and white, whatever that is, when you reach, that's when you reach your presence, you know? Sometimes people need to understand that if they can't see themselves ever becoming spiritual, it's because that idea of themselves doesn't want to break. So when that happens, when someone breaks an idea of themselves, literally it doesn't matter how old you are, you just need to do it, you know, for example, you know? So what does that mean? That means that, for example, you're you're five years old and you break your idea. You just remember your, you know, fifth birthday amazingly, you know. Um, and or if you were a, let's say, person who had looked through every library to understand what truth is, and you were simply the death of that man to discover. He's always alive moment, you know? It's, um... There are various views, but, you know, you have two eyes, you know? Where is this two eyes being considered from, that source? And see if the duality in your life needs to be continuously um, similar to a program, as if you're in a program, or you want to experience a very more natural programless life, you know, you simply are experiencing on multiple levels, your, your senses are amplified, you know, it doesn't matter what, whatever you're doing, whatever toxin or poison you have in your body, or some, whatever, um, bad judgment you have, you know, in, in, in what you think about your clarity, you're very clear, and once you experience it, you'll have a clear life, and that'll be a very abundant life. Thank you, that is enough to open up. Our eyes to who is really looking. Thank you, guys. And always thank yourself as well. Because where that self ends and where myself ends, there isn't a lot of separation there. You know, literally, when you reach the end of the word end, there is no beginning. There never was an end. You know, it, it was. it's like that kind of revelation moment, you know. Which just, it's a human knowing you can have it any time you decide because you're alive. You're literally alive and experience your livelihood. Bring forth an authentic self in all areas of your existence. Simply by seeing all of them come down and they are within your, how you are perceiving your perceptions. Your observance. That is a more cl clear thing. I want to tell you a scenario. If you are a person, for example, back in the day, um, this is actually very interesting for me to communicate. Back in the day, the Buddha tried a, m a method, this human being who found it, who found the gate, you know, because, you know, there, there never needed to be a gate, you know. When he found that, he, before that, he tried a method where he was about to die. Literally, he, he wouldn't eat food. He just sat there experiencing his own death you know, very quietly, you know, when he did that, where death points to is simply a rougher route, in other words, if you feel, for, for example, literally how, like the Buddha felt, you know, some people take drugs here, right, we, we see people taking drugs, however, people who don't take drugs, um, if you just let your body die and you don't maintain it, that's worse than drugs, you know? So, if, if your body's, you know, reaching that point, like how the Buddhas did, you know, the Buddha's body went into that state, then you will see that what is aware that you are dying, what is aware, that presence of awareness that is aware that you are dying, literally sees... That it doesn't need to die. It sees how it is the God. It is the creator. And comes back. You know. You don't have to die. You are life. You can live. You know. 
without judgment, for example. And so, for example, that's how the kind of experience, but that's the type of seat, roller coaster seat Buddha went in, literally the seat of his own death, to, to see, just to see how far the body can go or what that method to enlightenment was at that time, you know. And then, the Buddha story is very beautiful because it continues and you can see what kind of a beautiful being the Buddha was, you know. Because when he was about to die, <laughs> randomly a girl brings a bowl of rice and gives it to him. And it's not only the girl. It is existence pushing him back up. It's as if life is pushing him back to live. Life is fighting for you. Life is pulling you to itself. Death is your own illusion of your own stillness. Do not be scared or afraid of death because that is affecting your life in ways it doesn't need to. Do not be afraid of death. Do not be afraid of change. Do not be afraid if your eyes close. Do not be afraid that you will be stuck in an idea. You will not be stuck in an idea. You will re-experience yourself in a more subtler and grander canyon. But, regardless of the path you take, after the while this, these were the thoughts in the Buddha's head. Regardless of the path you take, while Buddha was eating those, eating that, uh, the rice that was keeping him alive. You know, I feel the Buddha in his mind was the path is not there. The path is not um, to go look and see what happens after death. That is not the path. And he, you know, stood up and went and sat by a tree and breathed and was that was like like literally forgot about his parents his um his teachers and his identity literally he's like i've had it identity i've had it personality program or condition program you know literally when he was like that and he sat by a tree existence taught him by showing him that he did not need to keep that illusion alive and within that presence, there was an enlightening force because literally the darkness didn't have to be there to affect your experience, you know. And love became the truth. Love became that, wor that word in the end who literally hits the bomb for everything, for all other, um, you know, concepts to break, you know, to free you from that reality. The word love and the idea of love is the gatekeeper between the dimensions of idea that you think yourself are or ha are a combination of. And when you come to the word love, the love is the gatekeeper, you know, and the love will let you out. Literally, I want to very oddly suggest that the love was a very sacrificial love but a love that was aware, the reason it's sacrificing itself is because you didn't need to be in that experience. You see? Why do we not let our kids watch bad things? Because they do not need to creatively with their attention and imagination and vividness and vibrancy, you know, to not look at that, you know? That creates a worse psychology, you know? That creates a very bad psychology. If you're telling your kids, you can't see this at this age. It is putting a program of conditioning that they can't have something um, when it's their own creative experience, you know. And it's true because they begin to create it. The moment the child is born, his eyes just begin rolling around, you know. And he's experiencing his cry, he's experiencing his body, he's experiencing sound in a room, you know, and that's that's the child experiencing all. He's experiencing the slap mark of the doctor on its back, you know. It's experiencing all these and understanding that its attention was a continuation of another process of consciousness. You do not end when there is no death. And this is an experiential path in which one will be led naturally to.
a lot of people who think they have bad luck a lot of people who think they have bad luck literally really look at yourself and see if you have good luck what does that mean what is bad luck what is good luck you know is it is it opportunities is it entertainment in survival value what is it Always look through your own eyes and really see what that own is. When someone says, who are you? One of the questions a human being can ask you. Literally, if a human being asks you, who are you? Really look at what is happening there to your presence. Because communication does limit presence. Please understand. Verbal... Bullying, for example, or abuse to children at very young ages is a is programming their minds in a very unneeded way. Kids do not need to work with fixed, complex ideas of lack. Mental clarity is something perhaps even outside of school that must be worked on. Do you understand? They're not teaching you everything you need to know about life in school. They're just teaching you very speci- very deep specifications of ideas and that form of expression. And ex- expanded history. Cold out history. Let's just um, enjoy the silence for a moment. Let's just me, let's me and you. Um, let's just I'm a, I'm another human being, you know. You're another human being. I'm a being. You're a being. We are here now. Where is the difference? You know, where's the separation? For example, existentially, I'm speaking in, in terms of experience that awareness has self-reflectively. And when you are there, your abundance was always there cuz you can you could have always you can always choose to be abundant in your experience i i like conversations that are deep and the reason is because i'm re- receiving more of a landscape in other words when i have conversations like these with people you know and i don't i don't try to have it often with people actually in back in the past they said that People who were spiritual, they never talked about their spirituality because they didn't want to, like, chain themselves to their identities. They were simply silent beings, you know. Back in the day, that was, you know, a route. And as people, you know, as, as me and as my understanding of the value of what they were doing then... I don't really talk to anyone other than my phone or the camera when I'm doing these. I don't talk about this kind of stuff anywhere else. Because I do not need to bring this into, bring these, connect these ideas to something else. When I'm outside, I don't talk about what I'm doing because it's not something that, you know, it's, it's just something naturally I'm doing. It's just one part of my day of a, you know you know, a projection, a project. However, um, om. <laughs> if, if everybody who said um started saying om instead of um, literally we'd have a lot of awareness develop in the world suddenly, you know, if everyone did that. Om. <laughs>
Feel your expression in your communication. Feel your expression and how you're alive while you're chanting and within that dissolution into that sound. ideas I have to share right now as you say mantras this powerful as you say these mantras you are reaching the ends of your truth as you say these mantras you're literally moving past the human idea and you're going into a different territory of consciousness and as you work with this sound and as you say it you begin to stop thinking literally you're literally no longer thinking and feel the vastness of the experience you're having right now we as personality constructs are not accessing the experience we're having on this earth we can be having such a greater experience access that your, the happiness of your life, you know, if you want to know your life's happy, stop talking about it. Okay? Go know it. Go be it. No longer ask if your life is happy. No longer create, like, thousands of other self-help authors. Do you know what I mean? Who are the best thing they can be are mirrors. Mirrors. Everything needs to reflect to you and be made aware of you and the self. Be clear and hold within yourself clarity of presence. I hope the ideas presented here communicate that I'm slightly freezing while I'm communicating these, but also communicate the depth of the human activity the human being has done many things in its life. You know, we should be studied literally how Benjamin Franklin lived, not what Benjamin Franklin did. Literally, we need to sit down reflectively and observe that idea and receive and re experience that idea fully. You know, we are not getting enough experience out of our ideas. We literally can. When you do this, you don't need drugs, you don't need anything, even whatever you're doing, you are comfortable, because your experience is high, and by high, I mean it is at a vaster view, a grander vision, and you're no longer a presence that even feels it's not inspired, you know, it feels dull and bored. Do not, if you're, if you find yourself feeling the idea of boredom, you know, that's when you should really look at yourself, you know? And you can have various games. You can either go really experience your boredom, or you can get up and do another activity. Do you know what I mean? Do you want to experience your boredom? You can, but, you know, it's, it's again your own experience of it. It's how comfortable you are with what you're experiencing. When you think about how comfortable you are with what you're experiencing, that fluidity is an allowance of your experience to be present. My, my parents found my words becoming very wise to them suddenly, you know, and they didn't understand how. How did, how, did, how did our son suddenly start becoming so wise in regards to spiritual or any idea context, you know? My awareness suddenly changed. When they saw that, that was when the, my mother had more of a certainty in my path where I was going. You know, she's like, okay, I see. I see that his eyes are opening, so he knows. It's as if my mother saw, like, I see that his wings are there, <laughs> you know? You know, and she's like, he can fly, you know, for example. That's, that's my mother's view, which was amazing. Because I really love my mother, you know. She created me, guys. <laughs> love you, Mom. However, now, um, when you see that moment... Um, my parents literally, 
you know, they, they, they began to see that it's, it was as if my knowing was different. My personality had changed. There was a difference in my persona. There was a difference in how I was limited before and now I am not limited that much, you know. My parents saw that and it was very new and unique to them because my choices became much more naturally and authentically aware. You know, literally I, I became aware, so my actions naturally flowed. It was a very loving place, especially existentially from the core of your heart, for example, you know. Um, the ex your experience of life can be amazing, you know, it, and that word amazing can never define that amazement, you know, because it's, it's experiential, you know. Then it's, it's much more enjoyable, you know. Some people say life is not a video game. Some people who wrote b books on the holographic universe say life is a video game, you know. And when we look at video games, it's a creative process. We should never hate the creative process. Never hate the creative process. And when I'm saying creative process, existential creative process. If anything is... Um, bothering our existential awareness of creation we should change that you see kids need to be aware of their existential awareness and creation and they literally need to be introduced to their thoughts differently teachers need to begin teaching existentially to children it doesn't matter what field of a teacher you are. Make the student self-reflect. Make the student become aware that it does not need to live in limited ways. That is inspiration. Teachers are the gurus of the future. And the teacher must have seen through his own eyes to see the same thing in the student's eyes. existential knowing must never be judged or covered with too many thick ideas existential knowing does not need to be talked about even it does not need to be written in sacred books but let it always be pointed at and perceive your existence here and always much blessings ahead natural blessings that are coming from w with your harmony of life L literally good things begin to happen so many amazing things begin to happen you begin to have days where it's no longer dullness it becomes days where suddenly someone is throwing a tennis ball into one of those you know small tennis ball cylinders and you know he catches it you know it's, it, it could it could get to that degree of amazement that you are even attentive to that to you know be limited to oh I was bored I, I saw this I felt like this human beings need to always feel comfortable around another that is the greatest value you can teach the children of the next world be a person who if you're alive you literally look at life and you're like okay if I'm alive if I can do something about it if I can be something I'm going to make the wor the wor world a better place and then die literally in that time frame all right, all right I'm here to this amount of time okay I need to just enhance the system get you really make it aware make humanity a successful presence on earth we want to be a successful presence not a presence that is going towards extinction extinction is simply never even possible however it is the breaking of a face and not everyone's ready to break their face okay <laughs> you know without punching of course don't break your face with punching you know it's uh, I'm talking about your ideal self that face you know <laughs> and with that Enjoy your own company and develop it into an efficient influence on existence. If you are a person who is in a family or whatever, you know, you don't you're not a millionaire, you are, you have a slightly hard life in your own eyes of regards to what part of the system you're existing in. If you're that, if you feel you don't have money or something but you have family values, existentially be with your kids existentially be with everyone be a real person in front of your kids 
Don't try to be the best dad. Be a real person in front of your kids and allow him to tune in and harmonize to that sense of natural reality. When you're around people, when you become your natural self, you know, you harmonize your environment. When someone is calm, where he can communicate his ideas on many dimensions, that is a very noticeable and beautifully aware moment which can help it's simply placing that that is how a lot of people who've given great speeches have kept us have reminded us of what was happening before we were born hopefully my voice right now will remind many people of why they're even born and a healthy and abundant existential creation of their own being you need to be yourself to the fullest. That is, that is another beautiful t-shirt idea. Be yourself to the fullest. And never accompany yourself alone. <laughs> Do not hold to a lonely person who's creating a lonely life. Do not hold to a limited person who's creating a limited life. Do not hold to a limited mind, you know, and you can't draw or be creative at all. Creativity is simply your allowance to express yourself more naturally. That is creativity. Everyone has a Picasso in them. Everyone has a lot of, you know, all these ideas are there. Good ideas are always there, you know. They're on the good side. Good ideas are on the good side. Start feeling good and you'll see more good ideas, you know. Literally bring that abundance, mental abundance in your life. Your, your, see, your, your thoughts need to... The way they, you're aware of your ideas and how you communicate, that needs to become very conscious by you. You need to become conscious of how you're communicating and how you are being who you are. Or even if there is a who to be, you know, in the first place. Or that the value of who, what that idea means to everyone, is equal to the sound who. Who. I'm pretty sure that's why owls are wise. Who? They're all saying who. <laughs> owls are very wise, you know. They're always literally at at night when you're pissed off or something and you see them, you know, for example, outside and they're like, "Who? Who? Who?" So, you know, some 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 kind of owl noise that resembles that sound which makes you realize what <laughs> who can be. As you self-reflect, you I'll open yourself to your own freedom. You need to experience life fully. You need to experience life on many dimensions and know that the dimensions are created because you have set limitations for yourself. You have set another sound which you have brought into that, you know, for example. However, also realize that language is a beautiful tool and language is your vaster creative body, you know. There's, there's, there are people who just focus on, you know, the physical wavelength to the degree that they don't, they don't want to be creative. They feel like they're not creative, so they're like, I'm not creative. I can't live in, in that way, you know. You need to slightly amplify your, um, view. You need to harmonize your view to existential sounds as you harmonize your views to the existential sounds you realize that other sounds have a different meaning than the sounds you've been hearing all day if you wake up and you're aware if i tell you what can you what are the sounds you remember in your day and it's only conversations that is not the best thing how was your day? You know, you're, you. If someone becomes a parent, I think this is a good idea. When you ask your kid, "How was your day?" You know, you don't just, you don't just leave it to like, for example, "How was your day?" It was good. You know, you don't, you don't just stop there. You ask, "How was? What was the highlight of your day? What was the peak experience? The greatest moment of your day? Please share, son. You know, and you would get the kid to ex communicate in that form of healthy way. When you, when you do that, then <clears throat> there is a more conscious upbringing of a human into this world. You must understand that he, mankind, he, the human, man is not bad. It's just that 
His conditioning tells him that he is bad. Man is not weak. It's only his conditioning that is telling him he's weak. Man is powerful. Because regardless of the conditioning, every idea is openly reflecting and showing the power that is exists that exists in man that exists in man you know that kind of power see it do not contribute to human games that are confusing for many humans allow nature's voice to be communicated when I am putting up all these videos, I don't have a sense of wanting this to become anything. I just let this be a natural expressive contribution of my combination of well, who I am to present these ideas here. You know? It's a very natural act. My intuition is very aligned with nature. In other words, when I look at nature, my intuition is amplified instantaneously. You know? And then I, I have um, a sense of greater knowing of my environment, and that's uh, how I work. I work with that flow. You are your own harmony. Your heart is in harmony. It's just the idea of you who thinks you're not in harmony. Your body's in harmony. Everything's in harmony. It's just your idea of you who thinks you're not in harmony, and you're pulling yourself to experiences of disharmony. It's an existential process. As you are aware of it, you realize that the moment is your tunnel of experience. Literally, that tunnel people see, with the light at the end of the tunnel, the tunnel should be synonymous with moment, with the experience you're having right now. And see if you need to even create a sense of self that needs to find itself in heaven. See, try and see if you can see heaven here. Try to see if you can see heaven here. And tell me. That the same O that is in God is also in love and is also in moment and is also the tunnel where the light is at the end the light of your own natural free will not to live an unfree life you know of course my words here now are aimed at helping you self reflect always i am i through these conversations i don't want you to you know create another story to be attracted to i want you to really look at yourself let my communications in these videos be heard in ways that it makes you self-reflect and harmonize with your natural presence with being with existence with the moment you know and then carry on your day that's it and <laughs> that's literally it you know experience the moment that's a beautiful thing you know that's what you share in common with every other human being just ask him how's your moment yeah <laughs> And it's always lovely. With the same L that is in godly. <laughs> Before I end off here, I want to say appreciate your breathing. Appreciate nature. Appreciate and be grateful for your existence. Regardless of any idea, you just be happy and be comfortable with your, your existence. And now, create and also always observe the creation of your greatest self. Become the greatest outcome that a life can mean or can be. And as we hammer our limitations, once the gate is open, heaven is always here. Natural, harmonious, 
universal existential harmony and presence is here. Feel it and continue your day <sighs> to the night and to the day and to the beautiful harmony of life. You are here and now. Trust me, if I'm still saying you need to be here and now, then you don't read books. <laughs> I don't need to tell you to be here and now. You need, people need to be at that state of presence, you know, because many people have shared. That's the existential wisdom. Even though I made a comment about self-help books, I want to also make another comment that self-help books are also wisdom being passed down, natural wisdom. Enlightenment, enlightenment can come from you having read a thousand books and sat down and struggled over the ideas of you not making it or you not being enlightened. You know, there are people who are at that point, and there are also people who look at a leaf, fall onto the stream and silently move, and know life. Literally, they just know life by seeing that, and there is not knowing limited and chained to words. Thank you. Love and light and, you know, live comfortably. Thank you. <laughs>